Hello everybody. Welcome back to our channel. Today yes. we're doing a more fun video. Oh, what about the new viewers who don't know what our channel's called? Okay. Welcome to... Temples in Training. Oh yeah. <laughs> So especially with our new rebranding, um, kind of starting fresh, we thought it'd be fun to do a Q&A video to kind of just get to know us a little bit better. Um, so obviously there's going to be those of you who've never met us before and only know us online, so might not know too much. And also I realized that especially with our jobs and what we do mm -hmm. um, with children's ministry and other things, a lot of people only know us through that. So they don't know too much about our history and I've always Ooh. found it what? <laughs> no, keep going. I don't know. I've just always found it kind of fun and easier to understand a group or a channel and their content and everything they put out when you get to know the people. Um, yeah. So, so we just thought this would be kind of fun. I've got some videos that I put together. We tried to do this when this one was asleep, but you know, she has that uh, FOMO. <laughs> FOMO? Yeah, FOMO. Fear of missing out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to be a part. So, we don't have too many questions. I'll try to run through them quickly, though, just so that this isn't a forever long video. But we hope you enjoy. Yes, sit back, relax, and get ready. <laughs> the very first question we have here. I've actually answered this question a couple times, but I'm going to let you answer it first. All right. What would a perfect day for you look like? Waking up at an early time because I don't like to sleep in I really don't like it and sleeping in to me is like eight o'clock so waking up around like six seven o'clock is a good time to wake up getting breakfast ready cooking for the whole family before everyone wakes up that'd be very exciting to do make like pancakes maybe some designs on the pancakes <laughs> even though I'm not the best at cooking I can still follow recipes so that'd be exciting um let's see then uh, get everyone excited to do an activity, whether that be going to the beach or, or going and grilling. You know, I like grilling stuff, like hot dogs, hamburgers, some simple stuff. Or like uh, going to a movie or a special event, that'd be exciting. So that would take up the, mo the chunk of the day. And then after that, coming back home and just reclining and relaxing, um, whether it be just taking a nice nap or just watching a movie together or just relax, chilling and whatever. Probably play with the kids, I do like doing that. And then uh, just rounding it off with like a cool little pizza night or something like that. That's always a good good way to relax and chill. Just uh, enjoy it on a nice sitcom or, or <laughs> uh, something else, like a feel good movie or a funny one. And so uh, yeah, and then getting to bed early. Because, you know, having a good night rest So it was good. a perfect day. Yeah, I think it was good that you answered first because that kind of like, while that's sort of still my answer, that like was mm -hmm. my answer a lot. Oh. So, so that's good. But I've kind of changed my thinking mm -hmm. on it because, like I said, I've been asked this question a couple times. I used to be very specific about what the perfect day looked like and it looked very similar to what you just said. Mm -hmm. um, but now uh, I've kind of lowered my standard for it a little bit mm -hmm. just because... I've decided there's like just like two or three things that I want to make sure in order and that is the perfect day. Whether I get nothing done, whether mm -hmm. we don't do anything, whatever it is, just like the perfect day is there's no, you know, spiritual warfare between you and I. Mm -hmm. So our marriage is in a good place. Yeah. Our house is in a good place. Okay. Um just like our home, our family and um that I've have a, my relationship kept up with God, you know, so as long as those mm -hmm. things are set, I feel like, you know, it'll be a perfect day for me. Okay. Like, cause there, cause I've, I've, that's been something I've been doing a lot is just like, what can I do to feel good? And as long, there's been days that I had no sleep at night, but I'll do my devotional in the morning. You mm -hmm. and I have talked yeah. and I'm spending time with the kids and nothing else in the house will get done. But it'll be a good day, you know, yeah, because, I get you. you know, whatever it is, positive, so, yeah. yeah, so, as long as my home, and I don't mean necessarily, like, like, little things done around the house, I just mean, like, you know, there's not piles of things everywhere, it's mm -hmm. not, like, out of order, yeah, you know, that kind of thing, it's okay if, like, 
you know, there's some laundry to do or whatever it is, but if, if you and I, obviously God first. So if my relationship with God is in order, my relationship with you is in order, and my relationship with my family is in order, yeah. that's a good day. So go. that's a perfect day for me. What is one piece of advice you would give a newlywed or soon to be married couple? Mm. Piece of advice, if I could pick just one? Yeah. Man, that's a tough one. I could blurt out a bunch, but. Okay, I can start I if you want with this one. one. Just because I, I know. Go ahead. Mine would be communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm. And you hear that a lot, especially in like, you know, other relationships and stuff, that communication is key, but like, it's not a joke, it really is. Um, mm -hmm. I think something that we had a hard time in the beginning is, you know, you wouldn't want to hurt my feelings, I wouldn't want to hurt your feelings. We yeah. use the phrase walking on eggshells a lot. Uh, um, and, you know, that would bring in, you know, maybe distrust or other things that would kind of come up just mm -hmm. because we were afraid to communicate. But once we kind of got past that, you know, I think it makes a relationship so different if you can talk to someone. So even if it's like, Oh, an issue that you maybe can't work out yet, maybe you're disagreeing on it, whatever it is, as long as you communicate that to each other, I feel like that that's the one thing. Talk all the time. Yeah. And even if, one thing I realized too, if you're nervous to talk about something, say, communicate that. You know, yeah. say, I'm nervous to bring this up to you because I feel like this is what's gonna happen. And a lot of times, that'll kind of open the other person's mind a little bit. Yeah. Maybe originally they would have reacted a certain way, but you've opened their mind to go, okay, I'm going to step back. Thinking. And yeah. yeah, and they're like, oh, well, I, I don't want to act like that. I don't want to prove you right. So let me open my mind a little bit mm -hmm. and be able to communicate those things. You've done that to me. You said, yeah. I don't want to say this because, and I've said, I don't want to say this because, but if you keep that line open and you guys just talk, you, like everything else kind of, yeah, you know, I do feel that miscommunication was a big uh, hurdle to get over, you know, where one person didn't feel like they were uh, expressed enough and, and then we would kind of hit on that one point when right. in reality it was just a misunderstanding or miscommunicating yeah. a specific point or, or something like that. So it's really easy to get lost in all that and, and in the heat of the moment especially. I yeah. know that that's a big struggle, especially early on. Um, yeah. I, I would say, I don't know if you were done. Yeah. Okay. Um, as hard as it is to pick one specifically, because a lot of things can really help you, especially for a newlywed, I'd say, um, I'd say that uh, the one piece of advice I, man, it's really tough. Because <laughs> I can't just narrow it down. Well, we have some other questions that might you might be able to add into. Yeah, but I'll just I'll just say as far as um, the biggest one is uh, forgiveness. The number one thing is being uh, uh, as open as you can to and ready to forgive the other person because you know mistakes are going to be made. You're going to learn new things about each other. You know that you didn't know before. Yeah. You know little things especially, and that can escalate to big things. You know from small to big, just being ready to forgive, and and that's one thing that I've always asked older couples, um, like really old couples, like oh how'd you guys how'd you last? Make how'd you make it? Like what? what are like the, the golden nuggets that I can receive from this relationship? <laughs> yeah. And they would always say, it's like, hey, there's been a lot of uh, forgiveness, sacrifice, and compromise. Like, but yeah. I think the biggest one would be forgiveness, you know, because it's always important and healthy for a relationship yeah. to, um, although there can be disagreements and then there'll be arguments and then there'll be uh, settlements and things like that, forgiveness in the end should really be yeah. the number one thing you should take away. Yeah, I agree, very good. Yeah. Okay, so this one might open up a little bit more. All right. What is the most difficult thing you faced as a married couple, and mm. how did you get to the other side of it? Okay. Um, as like, I would I would approach this question as the hardest thing we've had to deal within our relationship. Yeah. Not as just like overcome, because I know like. Parenting is like the hardest thing oh. to overcome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but I think, yeah, as, as, as a, a relationship, relationship, I would say... Um, I think that's what it means. Yeah, I think that is what it means. So I'm going to try and do that. Okay. Um, I would say our, our arguments would be the hardest thing. Because I know my biggest uh, thing is how to, how to properly walk through an argument. When there's a disagreement and um, you guys don't agree, there's certain coping mechanisms or defenses that can be brought up. I know for me, I play 
either the um like the Sheldon or victim cards <laughs> where it's like, oh, it can't be my fault, so I kind of try and guilt trip or something like that. Especially early on, that was kind of my go-to. And so what would happen is when I would pull these cards or, or, or feel attacked and the argument where it's like, man, I don't, I don't want this to end bad, I would eventually end it bad by doing that because then we would both be upset with each other or something like that. So I'd say um, our doing, arguments... By doing what? By like uh, making you feel guilty or, or, oh, okay. or um, playing the victim or just shutting myself out because we would go nowhere. We would honestly just, so, just be upset so about So you would other. say the hardest thing was communication. So, because you're saying yeah. arguments, how we yeah, communicated, how we communicated so through our disagreements. Communication is important. Boom, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, that's good. Was that it? Um, yeah, I think. Okay. So, I would say the hardest thing for me that I thought was, the thing that I thought was hardest for us to get through was um, our completely different kind culture. of... Yeah, culture, not backgrounds. not necessarily culture only, but backgrounds mm -hmm. and figuring those things out because you can bring what you have um, forward to your relationship and how you've been brought up and the things that you believe in or don't believe in. And when someone is like completely different, you're like, hold on, wait a minute, what are you doing? Like, this is wrong but it's just a different way that somebody's lived. So if you if you live a certain way and you're brought up a certain way your entire life, you can tend to think that's the only way that things go. Yeah. Um, and that could butt heads a lot. And Okay, so we had to do a little switcheroo there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we were on my turn of the question. Yes. I think it was coming from two very different backgrounds and upbringings and trying to kind of learn to live together with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think our foundations obviously were very similar, but certain things culturally and just like, you know, different things we grew up with, mm -hmm. I think made it kind of to where we butt heads a little bit. Yep. And um, I guess just for example, like me, everything was also very punctual. Always very punctual. Mm -hmm. um, so if we did something like we were early, like we're very on time for things, and so you know when we would like plan things, mm -hmm. plan dates or whatever, and it was like, hello, come on, like that would get into us into arguments. Like he would be like, oh, what's the rush? He's very laid back. I was very much more punctual. So, mm -hmm. and then you have stuff like um, our financial, the way that we looked at finances and stuff. Yeah. You were much more like. Oh, things will happen things will come together don't worry about it mm -hmm. and I was much more of like wanting to make sure we budget thing worrying about I worried about money so much mm -hmm. and so you have things like the being thing you have the thing like being on time and then you have finances and those are two huge different things so yeah. um, bringing two very different people together as one that was, I think, that caused the most um, arguments and mm. things, especially in the first six months. I would say our first six months of marriage was like our trial period. That's when, when it was really, really rough. A lot of people say two years, but six months, I think, after that, like, we figured it out, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so I think how we got through it was realizing what mattered and what didn't matter. So, like, picking mm -hmm. your battles sort of thing. So, like... Some things Priority. It, right, exactly. So I needed to loosen a lo up a little bit when it came to, um, you know, not rushing you all the time and that kind of things. And there's many other examples, but at least sticking to one for now. Um, mm -hmm. And as far as the bigger problems, talking through them. So again, yeah. communication. So the bigger problems, finding a happy medium because maybe... I was too much one way towards thing and maybe he was too much the other way and so bringing it to the center now I think we're really balanced on the important things yeah. and the things that don't matter you know we kind of you know just let go so I think that was our biggest thing to get through the, all right guys that's part one but tune in next time for part two <laughs>